Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Feature 5. This is where I take a look at the last five new to me board games that I've played. I review them and I rank them from my least favourite up to my most favourite. Now before I get started on these five games, I want to give a shout out to the show's sponsor, keyenda.co.uk, who are my go-to online retailer. And if you use the link in the show notes or the QR code, then you can get 5% off your first order. At number five, I have Whale to Look. Now this is by Oink Games, uh, a company that I'm hit or miss on. I've played some great games from them, but also played some duds as well. And sadly, I think Whale to Look is a bit of a dud. So this is a deduction style game where you are trying to work out where two different whales are going to appear on this somewhat of a grid. Um, one of the whales will go to the most populated area where there's fish and one of them will go to where there's the least amount of fish. And all you're doing is that you are peeking at these kind of hidden tiles to see a number on the back of them. Um, and these tiles are going to surround the fishing spots where the whales might go. So essentially, if you reveal a, a, a card that says five on it, you know there's a good chance that's going to be quite a heavily populated area full of fish. But of course... Everybody has a small piece of the puzzle, so even though there's a five there, the other three spots might have zeros on them, therefore there's going to be very few fish there, and you've been somewhat misled. Um, this is the style of deduction game that isn't essentially based on logic or facts and you know pure data. It is more based on speculation, going with a flow, trying to read what other players are doing. You know, if players are gravitating towards a certain spot on the board, and you've seen a five there, then you might know that's going to be a pretty good chance there's going to be a lot of fish in that zone but typically there's not enough space for everybody to go to those spots so you might want to commit early and so on there are some additional twists as well like each um i think the second round in each game a little special rule comes into play which slightly turns the game on its head um, but all in all despite a, a really cutesy look here some cool um production choices for these little boats and little people that go in these boats sail around and the whales look cool um, I think the decision space is pretty much non-existent. You're kind of just throwing a dart to the wild here and just hopefully it will stick. Um, and those kind of games, especially when you have deduction involved, don't quite work for me. I prefer to base, again, to base my decisions on these games based on, on things that I've worked out for myself and clinical you know, accurate data, I suppose, rather than just going with a flow. It can feel a little bit deflating when it doesn't work out and sometimes you just took a... A complete pot shot and it worked out so again very lackluster gameplay but it does have the cutesy factor but not quite a game for me so that is whale to look at number five at number four i have pusheen so kind of staying on the tiny box format here um pusheen is a dexterity style game where each round you're going to draw um, a card and that card is going to show a particular um structure of these little cat and animal tokens that you're trying to stack on each other in a particular formation if you're the first person to do it um, then you will score the card and then you're going to be you want to be the first player to score three cards so very simple dexterity speed style game um, the pieces are very tiny here which actually makes it a bit more difficult and makes the pieces fall over a bit more which can be fun um, that's pretty much what the game entails. Very simple stuff. This is like one out of five in terms of complexity. Um, I did have a bit of an issue with the production, um, not because of the size of the pieces. I actually think it's quite cute, uh, but because the the rulebook states that the orientation of these images on these tiles is important. Therefore, you need to have the actual characters facing the right direction. Um, but you'd assume on these cards that the actual orientation of the wooden pieces is important as well because certain them some of them have kind of straight edges and curved edges. Um, however, the cards and the pieces don't actually line up. So there's actually a huge production issue here and the game is essentially broken because the, uh, again, the card art, which is apparently important, and the wooden pieces do not match. So you're going to have to be wrong on one of those factors. Um, I did actually email the company about this and they said that you should go on the images rather than the actual shape of the wooden tiles, which seems pretty mad considering the first thing you look at on these cars is the actual orientation of the wooden pieces. So I'm pretty sure that's not a deliberate thing. I'm pretty sure they're making that up <laughs> um, and they have said that they're going to change that in future print runs. But 
still, if you want to waste five minutes for some silly fun, this is still good fun. You know, I definitely wouldn't turn a game of this down because it is so silly, so quick. Um, and it is cutesy, but shame about those production issues um, that could have easily been um, fixed and quite mad that they've, um, they've not seen that in, uh, you know, in quality control. But that is Pusheen at number four. At number three, I have Kodama 3D. Oh, this is a, a game where you're trying to fulfill these bonus cards or these scoring cards by building this 3D tree structure and having certain symbols of those trees in certain formations. So for example, some of these cards might say um, have um, you know, five or sorry, four or five of these mushrooms in a row. Or it might say how you get a point for every um, bee close to the tree trunk, that kind of thing. And you're all trying to just draft these tiles um, and place them in your tree as optimally as possible to score as many cards as you can. Um, there is a cool way you draft cards because you have this big grid of these tree pieces and a couple of your meeples on them. And you can basically travel diagonally, um, horizontally or vertically to collect, try and collect your next tile to place on your tree. Uh, but you cannot skip through other people, so you can kind of block them either deliberately or inadvertently. Um, there is also a way that I like that you actually collect the cards in the first place because the way you collect more objective cards is by not matching the um, symbols on the trees that you're placing, on the new branches that you're placing. So generally what that means is that you're going to sabotage your scoring to draw more bonus cards, which I think is quite a cool little trade-off and you need to know when uh, to do that. Now I believe there is a card game version of this where you are simply splaying cards out in front of you, but I did like the fact that this 3D version has some cool table presence but it also factors in this kind of balancing thing where you cannot just overload one side of your tree or it will just fall over, which means which it says you cannot do in the in the rule book. So you do need to balance your tree as best as possible. It does become a little bit fiddly at times to kind of monitor where all, all, all your symbols are because you're because of the 3D structure, you're looking behind corners and stuff, which isn't always easy to work out at a glance. But for a family game, for a 20 minute game, um, it's a nice one. Again, it's nothing special, um, but that tree gimmick is quite nice. It's quite cute. It's very easy to play um, and pretty chilled out. So not bad, not great. You know, you're looking at a five and a half, maybe a six out of 10 here for Kodama 3D. At number two, I have Claim It. Now this is a push your luck area control style game where you are trying to have the biggest chain of your pieces on this grid. Uh, Gameplay-wise, this game is fairly similar to a game called Can't Stop, where you are constantly trying to uh, roll dice, trying to get configurations of these dice to make sure you're eligible to place stuff on the board. In this one, you are basically assigning these three dice to either a row or column or one of these claim pieces um, and you're going to keep going you can go as far as you want until you can't place one where you'll go bust and lose all of your previous efforts. So it's all about knowing how far to push, um, you know, how far to kind of call it quits essentially and secure your place on the board. Um, I do like this kind of two layer system of having presence on the board and having permanent presence on the board because the first time you roll a particular grid reference, you'll just put your claim marker there or you can even overlap another player. Um, but the second time you do it, you can place this black claim marker there, meaning that it's yours for the remainder of the game and nobody can steal it from you, um, which is obviously great for that player, but it also means that the probability of going bust in the future for other players is a lot stronger because that particular reference is no longer eligible and is another reason to go bust. Um, very cool game, um, good back and forth between stealing spots from other players, a good forward progression as well because of that permanent securing of those spots that's going to naturally make the game or bring the game to an end which is the actual end game trigger when a certain amount of these spots have been double claimed um, and it's a nice tight one it also has a good um, catch-up mechanism because if somebody is running away with it naturally the other players are going to start targeting that player and stealing those spots off them but at the same time um, that's going to encourage them to maybe go bust a bit more um, and it's going to encourage the player who is in the lead to keep pushing them out to try and bring the game to an end. So all in all, I think this game is very well put together. Um, it's a little bit drab looking, which I think might put some people off. Definitely looks a bit dated in its graphic design, 
But I think that if this one had a, a fresh lick of paint, um, I think this one could do quite well in today's market. But again, if you like games like Can't Stop and want a slight variation on that, then definitely give this one a look. Certainly a game of yesteryear that's kind of faded into obscurity, but still a very good one in terms of its push your luck gameplay. So that is Claim It at number two. And finally, at number one, we are going back to the Euro strategy games. Uh, this is Terra Pyramid. So this is actually the newest game by Kramer and Kiesling. And boy, oh boy, does this have an old school Euro feel to it with a touch of abstract strategy game put in there as well. So this one, you are trying to build up these pyramids on this big grid. And all you'll do on your turn is you will place a tile on that grid, which will trigger a row or column or diagonal line worth of resources. So um, you will get these kind of colored cubes, which will allow you to build more pyramids, or it will give you gold, which will give you some bonus actions, or it could even give you these workers, which you have to have presence on your pyramids in order to build in the first place. And I love this system of when you place a tile, you will populate it, you'll get the resources, and then those workers can get kind of drawn into your pyramids in, again, that lines, or again, vertical, horizontal, or diagonal lines. And it's all about trying to optimally move them and build as much as you can, pretty much as quickly as you can. Uh, the bigger pyramids you build will cost more resources, so definitely be a lot more resource intensive, but will score you huge rewards in terms of points if you manage to score the same type again and again and again, because the resources in this game become quite scarce and you need to keep spending the same particular resource to build those pyramids. And I like the player interaction with this game, the passive player interaction, because whatever you do in this game creates opportunities for other players because they'll piggyback off your actions and start gaining resources that you've just gained as well. So I really do like that. But at the same time, the game doesn't go crazy with it because of the way the game's been designed. You cannot create a, a line or column or diagonal of more than four tiles. So again, you need to jump on those spots when there's four tiles or, or when, that, when that third tile is placed and secure that fourth tile um, so you can get the most bang for your buck here. Um, very cool. I love the resource management. I love the efficiency puzzle, not trying to waste anything because you can only carry a certain amount of these bricks from one round to the next. Um, so you need to be making sure you have the workers on the right spaces at the right time. Um, and the same applies to money as well, because you can only carry four coins from round to round. Um, has a good punchy pace to this one. I think that the game takes around 90 minutes to play, but it doesn't feel like it because you're so engrossed in the gameplay. Um, I haven't tried the additional modules to this one yet, because there are three game modes. There's a basic mode as well as two additional modules. I've only played the base mode so far, which I'm more than happy with and definitely feels like it has legs in its own right. So I'm very excited to see what else the game has to offer with those bonus modules. But again, if you like those old school 90s feeling Euros um, with a beige look by two fantastic designers, then this is so cool that a game like this is coming out in 2024. And it's a real throwback that I personally enjoyed a lot. So definitely gets a commendation from me. That is Terra Pyramids at number one. So there we have it, that concludes the video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. Uh, if you have, please be sure to hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other content too. But for everybody else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye-bye.